Hey everybody, welcome back. Today's brew is a Nescafe rich double filter full flavor. Um, seems to be uh, something about birds and uh, yeah, figured I'd pick this up and give it a try. Mmm, it's got some roast flavors in it. Pretty good. Let's get started with the mailbag. I hope you guys didn't mind that pile of stuff style intro. First one up here is a twist drill, $1, and ordered on January 1st and arrived on the 27th, which is today, and $3.60. And would you look at that? They're actually twist drills, but let me get you a little closer. As an automotive guy, I have tons of twist drills, but when I get home, I don't drill metal. In fact, most of the infrastructure stuff I do is drilling into wood. Drilling into wood doesn't require as high of a quality drill bit, but what I have noticed is that a lot of the drill bits that you buy that are multi-purpose, you know, wood, metal, whatever, are very short. Now I'm a pretty cheap person so I build a lot of stuff out of uh, just framing 2x4s and framing 2x4s if you if you uh, ram you know more than one screw on the narrow end it'll tend to split the wood so I like to pre-drill my holes and the thing I find is the ones the the, the drills that are small enough to pre-drill little holes are typically very short and so I figured I would get some slightly longer ones. And obviously you saw the price was right for these and they shouldn't have a hard life if they're just drilling through soft wood. So what I have here is a two mil, three mil, three and a half mil, four mil and five mil diameter uh, twist drills, just literally to pre-drill holes in two by fours. So here's an example, typical two by four. If I would hold this up against the wall and want to screw it into a stud, I would want to pre-drill this all the way up to the stud. So if I grab, you know, this little narrow guy, which would be good for a number six or a number eight screw, a typical drill bit would end like here. And I mean, what good is that? So I bought longer drill bits to be able to drill all the way into my uh, stud in the wall if I wanted to. See how that sticks out a good amount? So these things are the type of things I don't see myself using a hundred times a year, but when I do use them, it's going to be useful to have them on hand. I'm also not sure how straight they are. They're probably not very, but that's another story altogether. It's actually very reasonable. I've bought some locally that were worse than that. That one's got the wobbles. Not too bad though. It's okay. I could even just start the, the pilot hole with a regular drill bit and then use this drill bit to bore it further. So that's not too bad, four drill bits. I don't remember the cost, but it wasn't very much. $3.60, I think it was. That's a pretty good deal. So I'll have this ready for when I need it. Let's move on to the next one. Next one up is this one times chip. This is not exactly what I expected when I saw a bag of chips. Uh, January 3rd to the 27th, $2.79. Okay, let's take a closer look at these. So yeah, these do look a lot like these one or three watt LEDs. This variant here is definitely a three watt variant. Well, I say very, Definitely, it's definitely what I ordered is the three watt. Whether these are or not are a different story. 
So yeah, I can power this guy up. Got my power supply off to the side here. And this guy is supposed to use up to 3.8 volts. So we can go down to 3.8. You're probably wondering what kind of LED is 3.8 volts. There's 3.8 set and the current limit is 700 milliamps on this thing. Scrolling down to 700 milliamps. LEDs need to be driven by a constant current, uh, constant voltage mode. So 700 milliamps. I think that'll be quite a bit of power. Um, and let's see what color you guys think it is. First of all, I don't even know what side looks like. Positive and negative across from each other there. Okay, so here it goes. There we go. Can you see that? Can you tell what color it is? Probably not. So that is a uh, ultraviolet LED. We just swap to the current here. It is not current limiting. Nope, it's taking uh, 220 or so milliamps. And it is at 3.8 volts. So yeah, these are UV LEDs. I don't know why I ordered these exactly, but definitely probably has to be something with putting together circuit boards, which I do want to get into soon enough. I just have to figure out some logistics first. They all do seem to work so far. Yeah, I guess that's backwards. There we go. One more. I don't know how harmful it is to look directly at these. I'm trying not to. There we go. All of them are lit, which is nice. So these were a little bit expensive. UV LEDs are a little bit more pricey, but if you need them, you need them. So I would rather have them on hand and plan projects around the fact that I have them rather than end up wanting to do a project that needs them and I don't have them. So it's good to know, good to have added to the box. If you're wondering the wavelength, it's uh, 395 to 405 uh, nanometers. So probably be exposing some stuff soon. Or maybe we'll work with fluorescent stuff. We'll see. Next up is this chonky boy. Um, this thing is huge. But it says 108 LED, E27, flame light bulb, three mode, fake fur, 108 LED, Huyun. I think we know what it is. Uh, January 1st to 27th, it was $10. Kanaki Stan Kopex. Yeah. Yep, certainly seems like what I ordered. Yep. Looks like a standard light base to me. And this guy here, yep, two identical. So what these are are well they're supposed to be the fake sort of flickering lamp style uh, bulbs. And look at that, they didn't trim the little lead. There's a little lead sticking out there. That's probably not safe. Maybe I'll just give her a little trim there. Just in case. What about the other one? Oh, same thing with the other one. Look at that. Okay. So I guess I should plug these in so we can see the effect. But I don't like plugging in mysterious things from China. Huh. But of course, my real fans know that I have built a relatively safe test rig here. Um, I just need a way to, you know, screw this bulb in. But that's good because I have another wiring monstrosity here. And I'm not going to show you the underside of this because the... Uh, safety police will come after me but this here should plug directly into this 
like so. Be fully protected uh, aside from the ground. This is uh, double insulated. And if I turn this on, there we go. I'm able to activate it with my foot pedal. So let's install this bulb. And now totally hands free, you can see if it works. And it does. What do you see? Oh, you don't see too much. Let me flip this over. Look at that. That looks pretty good. What happens if I turn off my lights? Let's see here. Uh, don't know if you'll be plunged into darkness. There we go. And you should apparently be able to flip the sort of style that this is going. If you, I think, turn it off and on quickly. Thankfully with my, ah, there we go. With my foot pedal, that's super easy to do. So there's a breathing mode. And it, here it's on solid orange. And there's the flame effect again. That's pretty awesome. It works pretty well. And now if I turn it off and wait long enough, I should be able to just get it back to that same pattern if I turn it on now. And there we go. So I got these because Adam Savage from uh, the Tested YouTube channel, uh, also I guess Mythbusters, if you know him from there, he made a project using these. And I thought that was incredible, so I had to play with them myself. So I figured I would get some. So let's try putting on the other one. Make sure they both work. It's a lot less scary to do this with my test rig because I know it's safe. There we go. It takes a little bit to boot up. Let me turn off the lights for you. It's really nice. It's it really it's not a, a bright glow, but it's in a dark room. I can see it go across the room. Checking the other mode. Yeah, there's the breathing. And solid. And there's the pattern again. Well, that's pretty awesome. I'm really happy with this. It looks really cool. I think uh, I think you should all get one. And they were, they were $5 Canadian each. They probably jumped up in price because I bought it around the time that uh, Adam Savage did the video on this. But, uh, you know, now they might have stabilized in price. So take a look around. Maybe you'll be able to find it. But this seems to be the exact one that he used in that one day build. Awesome. Let's move on to the next one. Last but hopefully not least, and also the reason why I only had four packages this time is because this one here has two packages. Actually, I think it should have four, but they're duplicates. Um, so one times two uh, Chinese characters, one times two Chinese characters, and some values there. Uh, looks like I paid 327 for two of one and 781 for two of another kind. Didn't realize I was buying from the same seller until I went and actually bought. Oh boy. There we go. Let's take a closer look at uh, one of these modules at a time. So let's start with uh, this little guy. This is a boost module. Uh, this does not do any constant current or anything. It just takes a lower voltage and boosts it up to a higher voltage. So you would do that if, let's say, you were running a 12 volt LED from an 18650. Although I know LEDs should be run with a constant current driver, you could use a dropper resistor of appropriate wattage for that. But either way, if you have a small project and you want to power a one that has bigger voltage requirements, you can use this module. So this module takes uh, 3 to 32 volts in on this side, and we should be able to get uh, 5 to 35 volts out on this side. And they say in the instructions to uh, adjust the voltage 
uh, without a load. So I guess with just your multimeter. So before you guys comment that I'm doing it wrong, check the instructions yourself. So it's basically very simple actually to do a boost module. Um, Julian Eilert did a, a series on this and I kind of want to toy with it too. So I'll, I'll get to that as well. But basically you've got a module here that basically lets current flow through this inductor and then opens it up. And when it opens up, the uh, it generates a high voltage spike, which is then stored into a capacitor via a diode. And it just does that at a high frequency often enough and you can build the charge up on that um, capacitor. So you'll see the output capacitor is 50 volts here to deal with the spikes and the input is only 35 volt max. So we can hook this up to a power supply and just have it uh, have it work. Well, we'll see if it works. So we need some way to check the output voltage. So grab this. I, you know what? I love this little ANEG meter. It's amazing. For only like the $5 or whatever I paid for it. It's amazing. It's incredible. All right. And then we need input. And yes, I know I, I will be feeding this from a power supply, a switching power supply. It should be fine. I hope it doesn't catch fire. But if it does, well... It wasn't long for this life. All right. Plug this guy in. So this is still set to 3.8 volts. Um, I have not twiddled the pot at all. I know some of my commenters don't like when I don't do that, but oh well. Got a little screwdriver here. Should be able to twiddle that pot pretty easily. Core intact. Well, look at that. 17 volts set from the factory so it's taking 3.8 volts and giving us 17 oh 18 oh we're oh well here out of range out of range oh what happened There we go, 18, 17, 16, if I go the other way, whoa, 20, 28, am I blocking? Oh, I'm blocking everything. 28.7 volts. Twenty nine. How much can, will she suffer? Whoa, 50 volts. <laughs> it's not supposed to go up over 50 volts. We have a 50 volt uh, cap on the output. Oh no. <laughs> go down, go down. <laughs> this could be a mission critical moment. Almost blew a cap up for you guys. It's incredible. You don't see that on other channels. Okay, so clearly without having a load on here, we're not uh, we're not pulling down the energy in that capacitor fast enough but what do you want I'm trying to keep you clear so you can see that capacitor well oh, going the wrong way no going the correct way so this multimeter is obviously giving us an output resistance in the uh, range of a few mega ohms so that's why we're not discharging this capacitor quick enough but uh, <laughs> I mean it clearly does work and uh, we can move on to the next module so this next module is a lot more interesting than the other one. It's also more expensive. It was near four bucks each. But uh, this here does the constant current, constant voltage. It also does the sort of like the output checking. So this would be great for a, a battery charger. So you can, you know, charge, the, maybe I can charge that uh, 18 volt Makita battery on there. So this does do buck, but it also does boost. So it's both, it's a bust, uh, bust buck boost constant current constant voltage with output monitoring um, synchronous converter so you basically put any voltage in here from um, 4 to 35 volts and out on the other side you get uh, 1.25 to 
about 25 volts, I think the listing was, out. Uh, I see a 35 volt cap there, so maybe we can push a little bit higher. But yeah, this thing does it all. So it's actually quite heavy. There's a lot of copper because these there's, there's these big inductors here. There's um, there's these uh, pots which are wire wound. There's uh, two XL Semi uh, controllers on here, and um, thick PCB. Like this thing feels like a quality unit. I wouldn't really I wouldn't worry too much about that. So let's start by finding where the voltage is adjusted by. Doesn't say, probably by the first one here. So I can hook up my out positive and my out negative. I think the order is you do voltage first, you adjust voltage first, and then you adjust um, current after. So here is, put the put the multimeter a bit higher so you can see it over my chonky hands. And I think this one has a minimum of five volts, four volts, whatever, I'll put five volts. Not a big deal. And then in negative is up here. That's weird how they're swapped from one end to the board of the board to the other. In positive and yes again I am feeding this with a um, switching power supply that's just something you're gonna have to deal with or you can send me a linear power supply I mean the uh, PO box is in the description uh, my about page okay a 4.33 volts um, out and 5.09 volts in and this is the beautiful part is you should be able to adjust the voltage independently and come right up to that 5.09 there's 5.09 so 5.09 in 5.09 out and now I can just keep spinning this guy and away it goes so it's not only buck but it's boost you do both sides and I don't think I'm gonna do a drag race all the way to maximum here okay so that seems to be going upwards when I go uh, clockwise. So I'm going to go counterclockwise on the current limit. I'm not sure what the maximum current is, but I'm going to swap this into current. Um, does it really only go to 200 milliamps? There's got to be more more current somewhere. No, there isn't. Oh well. Uh, well, swap this guy to over here. That is O oh L already. <laughs> That's not good. I could be destroying my poor meter here. I didn't even notice that it was only 200 milliamp. That's oh well. Oh yeah, it's bringing my this power supply into current limit. Maybe this one is clockwise. These 20 turn pots take forever to get anywhere. There we go, I'm at the very end there. Nope, that is at maximum current. Don't worry too much about my multimeter because I did want to know its limits, but also my power supply over on the side there has a current limit at 700 milliamps. So we can't push too much wattage through the uh, through the little multimeter there. They do make spe special uh, screwdrivers for these pots. I think I may have to invest in some.
Okay, let's see what happens now. Still go OL. Or, sorry, not OL, but out of range. What if it's actually this one? Oh, so another red light has turned on there. There we go. Okay, this is the current limit. This is the uh, sense when you get like 0.1 times your current limit. So it should be able to increase. Well, yep, yeah, their current goes. Okay, so that's current. That's the um, sort of threshold checker and that's the voltage. So yeah, pretty cool little modules and I think they're going to be great for future projects. And these uh, five different items with uh, multiples of most makes up for today's mailbag. So that was a pretty good mailbag. It didn't take me a whole coffee to film. But I want to take this opportunity to thank my Patreons for their support. Without them, I wouldn't be able to afford coffee, especially since uh, my hours have been pared back quite a bit this semester. Um, they also allow me to buy these a little bit more expensive things and tear them apart, which I will, um, so you guys don't have to, or you can follow my guide, if you will. Um, it also lets me sort of plan for the future, so if you feel like helping the channel out, uh, go check out my Patreon page. Not only that, but you'll be able to chat with my amazing Patreons. And for the rest of you, well, make sure you like, comment, and sus subscribe because those things really do help. I'm trying to push my channel as far as possible these days. If you uh, just like the video and don't want to subscribe, that's fine. Just, you know, put a little thumbs up. It really does help because YouTube only pushes videos that people like or are controversial, whatever. Thanks for watching.